crashed a funeral before. Good thing we wore black. They did an excellent job. It looks so natural. Pale always was his color. <gasps> Try to say something nice about someone. What a day, huh? Parachuting into a cemetery because the perimeter was being guarded and it was the only way in? And exposing a deadly double agent who was trying to elude capture by faking his own death and being buried with an oxygen tank only to be dug up later? We knew all that, you know. I know. I was just saying it for anyone who might have been wondering why we're going through all the trouble. Who'd be wondering? I don't know. Anyone. Look, I've never told you guys this. It's kind of embarrassing. But sometimes I get the weirdest feeling like people are watching us. Like they're listening in on every single thing we do or say. And you know, I get that feeling too. So do I. some arrangements, a few last minute details um, for a funeral. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, well, was it somebody close? Uh, <laughs> I guess you might say that. The funeral is my own. There are three career criminals with one shot at freedom. Now they're working for the feds who put them away. These are the women of She Spies. Bad girls gone good. Cassie, Dee Dee, my present roommates and best friends. This is Kelly, my former roommate and best friend. Kelly, I know that name. We heard all about you. Uh-oh. Oh, don't worry. She stopped to the part about how you wanted to be more than just roommates, but had to move away because the sleeping together didn't work out. And when I say stopped, I mean, well, kept going. Dee Dee's got a cold. Yeah, I know how it is. Stuffed up, runny mouth. You mean nose. Uh-huh. So, uh, you guys call each other and say, are you wearing your skin-tight black leotard today? Uh, we sort of work together. Oh, what'd you guys mean? In jail. When we were, you know, visiting with our church groups. So we could see how really bad all those criminals were. In case any of us, you know, ever decided to drift away from our church group and, you know, commit a crime. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you. Kelly, you gotta tell me what's going on. <laughs> Um, okay. I guess you've probably heard of cryogenics. Sure we have. The human snow cone, the freeze-dried nuts, the people who get frostbite after they die. Walt Disney did it. Who's next? Michael Eisner? Uh, the only people who have done that are absolute zeros. And are people with bipolar personalities. What were they in jail for? Was it beating a joke to death? I met somebody, Julie, a year ago. Um, we fell in love. But she got sick. Um, they couldn't do anything for her, and she died a couple of days ago. Oh, I'm sorry. It's OK, because she's not gone, not forever. She's been frozen. And when they find a cure for what killed her, she'll be thawed out and made good as new. She'll get to live again. 
Forgive me, but it's not supposed to be perfected yet. I mean, no one thinks it works. Okay, that's what I thought. Well, we found a place, and they've put millions of dollars into research. They're guaranteeing that they'll be able to bring her back, which is why I've decided to be frozen with her. What? I said, which is why I've decided... Not what, what did you say, what, what are you talking about? What? You know what, you can't be serious. I, I am serious, this happens in two days. What? What, what did I say, or what, what am I talking about? Kelly! What? You guys might want to pull up a chair, this has been known to go on for days. Why are you doing this? Why am I doing this? I asked you first. Because. Because. Because! Because isn't a reason you give for doing something like this. Because is a reason I give you if I was four years old and I didn't want you playing in my sandbox anymore. You don't want me playing in your sandbox anymore. Don't try to change the subject. Why are you doing this? Why do you care? Because. So now it's a reason. Because I care about you, okay? Because you're here now, alive and healthy. I don't understand why you would choose to be dead. I'm not choosing to be dead. I'm choosing to be in love. Shane, I could be old or gone by the time they find a cure. This way, when Julie's brought back, I can be there. And we can pick up right where we left off. Isn't it better to take this kind of chance, especially for love, than to just let it die? It's just the age-old story of a man and a woman trying to preserve their relationship through the miracle of refrigeration. Just ice, thanks. Well, as strange as it all sounds, I actually find it kind of romantic. But why not wait a few years, you know, live a little more first and make sure it works? He doesn't want to take the chance that something else might kill him. A drunk driver, a random bullet, an enormous bale of hay dropping out of the loft of a barn and snapping his neck. That happens. He can't damage any major organs when he dies or they might not be able to bring him back. He's planning on injecting himself with something. He's thought of everything. He put all their things in storage, gave the cryogenics lab control of all his finances. He scooped out a ton of Purina for the cat, Tebow the next 5,687 episodes of Yes, Dear. So what's the story with him and Shane? They were best friends who tried to... That's right, unzippity doo da. They were very close, which is why we have to be careful about what we say. No more stooping to the kind of bad jokes you might be tempted to make about two people doing something like this. You know, their relationship's on ice. That they froze their assets. And sex is out, she's frigid, and he's... Yeah, I get the picture. And we were just warming up. And you think he'd really go through with this? I don't know, he didn't seem like the kind of guy who'd get cold feet. Cool to the notion. It gives his girlfriend the cold shoulder. Darn, I forgot how much fun it was to stoop. <laughs> and uh, you're saying he doesn't even think of it as killing himself. He's just hitting the pause button for a while, kind of freeze-framing his life. What, I don't get to try one? I mean, neither of them sounds crazy, right? I mean, we're not talking about a couple of frosted flakes here. It's not about tossing a couple of fruitcakes in the freezer. Two perfectly sane people are choosing to be mom and popsicles, <laughs> choosing to be frozen stiffs. That's probably enough. Okay. <clears throat> I got it. We know when we're hoping you don't give it to us. Shane asked me to look in the cryogenics lab, which she's with Kelly, and get this. It was secretly bought a year ago by none other than Henry Harrington. Billionaire Henry Harrington? Media empire disappeared from sight? Why would he buy a place like that? He shut himself off from the world a year ago, almost exactly when he bought the lab. You think that's why he disappeared from sight? You think he might be there, frozen? Maybe I can find out. I ran a con on him a couple of years ago. I spent some time in his house. Slut. Slut of money you probably got. That's what I said. I didn't sleep with him, Jack. I just pretended to work for a disabled veteran's charity and robbed him of half a million bucks. Sheesh, some people always think the worst. Okay, fine. So, he's supposed to be holed up at home. If Cassie can find a way to get in there, maybe Dee Dee and I can go to the cryogenics lab. I just, I had plans, but well, now I don't, so I thought maybe if you'd like the company. The blood is drained and replaced with a glycerol-based substitute, which won't freeze or clot. We pack each of them into a neuro container, which then goes into these polyethylene tanks. The tanks are then filled with liquid nitrogen. Maybe on the way home we should stop by the taxidermist, watch him stuff some rabbits. <laughs> if you don't mind, we, we try to keep the equipment sterilized. It's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke. <laughs> it's not to love. If I may, the liquid nitrogen begins to take effect. 
and over a course of two weeks, their body temperatures drop to minus 196 degrees centigrade and stay there. Kind of like a thermos, but without a little cup. <laughs> it won't fit in your lunchbox. <gasps> the windows are there because we like to see faces. These people are still very much alive to us, still very much a part of the world. I'll be just a tad late on their cable bills. <laughs> You are interested in this procedure for your father, correct? Because you're, you're not taking it very seriously. I'm sorry. That's just how we cope with this sort of thing. We giggle. Right. She's right. Ever since we were kids, it didn't matter how bad it was. Uncle Frank lost his toe in that unfortunate gardening <laughs> hole incident. What'd we do? We, we giggled. giggled. Uh, next door neighbor's canary got barbecued in that freakish little butane mishap. Giggle, giggle, giggle. 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 <laughs> People who are serious about what we have to offer usually ask how we can bring someone back to life. The answer is, they're not legally dead. As long as they're frozen quickly, everything necessary for life is still intact. I have a question. When you bring them back, can we see them, or do they just wander the earth eating human flesh? Get out. <laughs> oh, it's getting cold in here? Get out! <laughs> wake up, wake up! Ow! Oh, I know him! <laughs> <laughs> and they say they don't take American Express. Anybody have a knock anymore? Don't usually allow this on the first date. Actually, this isn't our first date. Cassie Stanton, charity worker, met March 25th, 1999. Convince me you were enamored of me before making off with a large amount of my money. Was that you? Ah, you were scanned the second your grappling hook hit the roof. My bad. Normally when I visit old friends, I use quieter hooks. Interesting. You're dropping back into my life almost as abruptly as you dropped out of it. Well, you're not exactly known for offering women certain things they want. Certain things? Certain things, like the C word. Cash? Commitment. Commitment? Commitment. You know, when you say goodbye to someone and then actually see them again on purpose? Yeah, I did that once. I left my palm pilot on her nightstand. The kind of comment that puts men a step below women on the evolutionary ladder. At least we have a good view. Make that two steps. Ah, committing to someone's a dicey proposition. You have to take all that bad along with the good. Take me, for example. A billionaire with my very own worldwide media empire. Access to just about anything I could even possibly imagine wanting. On the other hand, I live in a bubble. I knew there was something different about this place. I'm intrigued. A woman I know for barely a week disappears, and then suddenly, four years later, she breaks into my home to, what, to steal my silverware? Watch SpongeBob on my big screen TV? Truth is, I'm planning on buying a giant bubble for myself, and I wanted to know where you got yours. Nobody on the outside knows about this. We kept everybody out. The media, all but my closest friends and advisors. But you saw me coming and still let me in. Wow, can't a guy get lonely? Please.
About a year and a half ago, I started getting sick. Started catching things, you know, every kind of thing. Brought specialists in, it turns out my immune system has completely shut down. I have no protection against anything. Eventually it got to the point where the, the smallest germ, the, the smallest infection could actually kill me. So I had this built throughout the top floor. A controlled, sterile environment keeps anything out I don't want in. Weather, disease, even bulletproof. And this is where I live. Live or just put off dying? I'm well aware of the irony. You're staying alive for this. But you know, in many ways, I'm not that different from anyone else in this modern world. We're all experiencing life from the comfort of our own sofas. Almost like you're frozen. Why did you hide the fact that you bought a cryogenics lab? Bad PR. My success relies almost entirely on the perceived soundness of my investments. But you think it works? I bought it so I could make it work. So I could use it myself. Can't count on this thing protecting me forever, can I? Why are you here? Your company is allowing a perfectly healthy man to kill himself so that he can be frozen with his girlfriend. Outrageous. So you're saying that people will go to strange and incredible lengths just to hold on to something they love? Hmm, you sure held on to a lot of things here. What's this? Is it? <laughs> it is. It's a napkin from that night at the restaurant. Night at what restaurant? Oh, you passed out. Splat. Face first into your spaghetti. I was hungry, all right? It was the quickest way to my mouth. <laughs> You popped up, your whole face is covered with tomato sauce, you brushed by a candle, and your hair caught on fire. Well, I don't remember all the details. You jumped out of your chair. You started dancing around the restaurant yelling, I'm on fire! I'm on fire! I was on fire! I was on fire! You ever been on fire? You're kidding me. Hmm. This is the music from the talent show? We have to do it. What? Wait, Come on, now? we gotta do it now! Yes! Oh, no. no, look, it's no, been no. Years. We, no, we took no. second place Play. in the whole apartment complex with this, okay? You think of it as a dying man's request. Well, you do it. I'll watch. Oh, you're gonna dance with me. Come on. Time it was. Oh no. Oh. All I know is that I fell in love with you. And if all my dreams come true, I'll be spending time with you. Oh, I love you more today than yesterday. That's right. But not as much as tomorrow. to be white.
find something that'll help Shane talk him out of this. Oh. Oh. Can you imagine finding someone you feel that way about? I mean, someone you'd freeze yourself for? I want to feel like that. I, like I do that for someone. I just, I wonder sometimes if I really believe that I, I ever will. You know what I believe? I believe the carousel goes round and round and round and then it throws us off and it's up to us to hold on for as long as we possibly can. Don't you at least hope there's more? No, the time I spent hoping is time I could have spent on finding new ways to hold on. Hoping is hardly the road that will lead anyone to a longer life. Besides all the hoping in the world doesn't make something true. You don't have any proof. Sometimes it's just not about proof. It's about faith. I know it'll work, even though there's no real way that I can know. You either know or you don't. I'm sorry, that's just too big a leap for me to make. Too big a leap? For you? You're the most incredibly optimistic person I know. How could committing yourself to one person be too big a leap? It's part about knowing it's the right person. That's the biggest decision you'll ever make. Am I really going to be able to say to myself, OK, this is the one. This is it. This is it. This is all there is. You know, being able to say that is liberating. It makes every moment heightened. Every moment becomes more important. Every moment is spent in a bubble. Yeah, well, all right, so there is that. But the point is we all have choices. Life is about deciding. These are the best choices for me. That's what I thought I was deciding. But how can you know what the best choices are? You're my closest friend. That should have been enough. Why wasn't that enough? It's another leap of faith that you couldn't quite make. And you find out later there's nothing more important to relationship than being friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's a perfect way to start. It's a perfect foundation. The only hard part is having the courage to take it beyond being friends. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try. How else will you know? After all, life is short. Or long. If you don't find a person you freeze yourself for. Which pretty much brings us back to where we started. Dee Dee. Oh my gosh. Jack, there's something wrong here. Every single patient that was frozen at this lab has been referred by the same doctor. And that doctor is Henry Harrington's personal physician. I'm not sure these people needed to die. We, we have, have to call Shane. Shane. You, you go, go ahead. ahead. You go, go ahead. ahead. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Okay, okay you, you do, do it. it. I can't believe this. this. I'm dialing my phone. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh, oh my god. god. We, can't we can't stop. This, this must be a record. record. Don't, Don't talk, talk anymore. anymore. Stop. stop. I'll call, call her now. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. god. Just, Just say anything. Tenor saxophone. Oh my god. We both said tenor saxophone. We both said, we both said tenor saxophone. Oh my god. Are you, Are you getting scared? scared? I'm getting scared. Oh, oh my god! god. Uh-huh. Chicken and beer. I see what's going on here. Not so easy to freeze a fat guy. <laughs> Kelly, that was Dee Dee. I have some not so very good news. What's wrong? The thing is, I asked my friends to help. Well, look into the cryogenics place. Okay, don't hate me. I didn't want you to do it, so I had to check it out. They found something. The same doctor who diagnosed Julie also diagnosed every other patient who's been frozen. There's evidence that they weren't all necessarily going to die. I'm sorry. Just do me a favor, okay? Wait here, wait right here. Don't do anything, don't go anywhere until I can get more information, okay? Hey. Yeah. told me that I would meet someone else. 
And you said when I did, that I shouldn't let go. That's all I was doing. I wasn't letting go. Okay, well, now that I know you're still alive, I'd appreciate anything you can do to discourage our friend from freezing himself. Well, are you all leaving? I'm late for an appointment. You really are? I really are. Oh, what a shame. You know, of all the things I miss, I realize I miss the company of a beautiful woman, most of all. You've got a, uh... your nose. Uh, Henry Harrington hates harmful hemorrhages. Hence, he hopes his heart is healthy. I have a blood flow problem. Maybe my heart. Well, actually, I have all kinds of problems. My lungs, my spinal column, my pancreas. Can't even have sex anymore. Too many operations. Men who are single quite rightly take issue when their privates are covered in unsightly scar tissue. Dr. Seuss? If he was a doctor of urology. <clears throat> and that means no children, no little Henry Juniors to carry on my name. So I suppose that means it's up to me now. Yeah, I suppose I'll just have to live forever. Well, then I guess we'll have plenty of time to catch up. No, I wish you would stay. You see, I, I don't sleep very well at night. I could really use the company. I'm sorry. Maybe I could stop by? I'd sleep with you some other time. Now! Weren't you listening? I asked you to stay. And when I asked someone to stay, they stay. Over 40 patients referred by the same doctor. I can't believe this. Dee Dee. I was wondering. Oh. Hello? Dee Dee, it's me. I'm going through Dr. McDonald's files. It's bad. It doesn't look like these patients had what they said they had. He manufactured terminal diseases, then talked them into cryogenics. But why? I don't know. I can't get Cassie to answer. I'm going back to the house to tell Kelly. I'll see you there. That was Shane. We should go. Freeze! Talk about a one-track mind. Kelly? Kelly! be eternally comfortable in this position. We had to double you up so you'd both fit in the same tank. We hate to waste canisters on people we don't care about preserving. I have a few more things to prepare. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> that was a joke. I know how you enjoy a good giggle. What's our plan? Our plan? Our plan. We don't have a plan. No plan? No plan. We're spies. We're supposed to have a plan, a scheme, a secret last minute way to be the bad guys. You mean a trap, a twist ending, that kind of plan? Exactly. We don't have one of those. We don't have one of those? We don't have one of those. What's going to happen? I'm hoping for an ingenious escape from these ropes, then a comedic yet action packed martial arts fight in a story appropriate location. Oh, they're always good. <laughs> Jack, I'm sorry. Are you all right? I'm fine. Not to worry. The pointy little shards of glass broke my fall. Roll over. Maybe we can use a piece of the glass to cut the ropes. <laughs> Roll back. There's a piece over there. <coughs> it's so small. Sorry. The, probably the fear, the whole threaten to kill us thing, not to mention a re reaction to the cold and... I'm talking about the glass. D the glass is too small, right? And that's what I'm talking about, too. You know, even though the words I actually used weren't exactly, you know, the words one would normally use to say something that means, you know, that, that particular thing. We have to think of another way to get out of here. I have an idea. You do? I do. Dee Dee, if we manage to escape, I thought maybe you and I... Well, I was wondering if we could go out on a date. 
I, mean, I, I know, I know, I'm Jack. As in, pull the car around, Jack. When we get a day off, Jack. And what's that hanging from your ears? Just kidding. We like to intimidate you with our beauty and make fun of you, Jack. But the thing is, I think you're terrific, and I'd really love to take you out to dinner or a movie or somewhere just to talk and see if maybe, well, we could be more than we are now. It might be better to talk about it after. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Of course. And hey, you didn't say no, right? Which means there's still a chance. Unless, you know, I die. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the way it always happens? You too decent? Well, that's one more tank we'll have to use. Where is Kelly Sawyer? As I told your friends, I have a few things to attend to. If anything has happened to him, if you've touched him, you'll have me to deal with, you hear me? There won't be anything left of you to freeze! We have to get out of here, we have to find him. I told him to wait at our house, I told him to wait. He probably went after the doctor. No, I went back there to find out. Next thing I know, I get knocked out and end up here. Kelly, he's like a little kid, he trusts everybody. I don't know what he would do with a lie like this. <sighs> He didn't do this to himself. You killed him. He never did anything to anyone. It's not what he did. It's what he's going to do. One of the perks of having your own media empire. All the latest technology. Can we see what else is on? Late night TV is the worst. Pity about your friend. He came to see my doctor tonight, seemed very upset. Accusing us of all sorts of things. Well, we couldn't have that, could we? Had to put him on ice a little early, I'm afraid. You sick son of a... Now, 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 we haven't even been introduced yet. I'm Shane, the woman who's gonna tear your head off. Actually, Shane, it's more likely I'll be removing parts of you. What is this place? What's really going on? We're freezing dead people, as advertised. However, the part about bringing them back to life again, well, <laughs> can you imagine anybody actually believing that? You're using them to keep you alive. What? what? His immune system is shot. If he catches something, if a body part goes south, he has his pick of healthy replacements. You froze these people so you could put parts of them in you? Freezing's the only way to preserve them. I need refills and replacements on a constant basis. Far too many organs, glands, blood, and whatnot than I could get from any hospital. This way, I get what I need when I need it. And nobody will ever know. These people weren't even sick. Your doctor lied to them, told them they were dying. A simple little ruse. It's not a ruse. It's a crime. It's murder. A ruse by any other name. But people have got it all wrong, all this business of leaving a legacy. You're putting your footprints in history's cement. I mean, it's utterly overrated. And you know why? You're not there. You can't enjoy it. You're dead. So, I've decided not to die. Leastwise, not while I could do something about it. And we're gonna help. As a matter of fact, you see, my blood is constantly getting infected. I have to replace it almost weekly, and since we're both being negative, I want to suck your blood. Think of it as the opportunity for further intimacy that eluded us. Your blood flowing through my veins. For a week. Then it's on to someone else. Well, you know how I am about commitment. We'll need a few minutes to get things ready. Well, time's a-wasting. <sighs> Sorry about Kelly. Me too, Shane. Sorry, Shane. Looks like we're next. Maybe not. Those tanks are filled with liquid nitrogen. Help, help me get over there. If we could just... Um, yeah, there's a valve. It's amazing what a little extra incentive can do. <laughs> oh, a little help here. Our ropes came loose. One more. 
our stop. This is what you do when you live alone in a bubble. You play with yourself. You can do what you want. I've already told you this place is bulletproof. You're not going to get in. people who should live forever because just having them here makes the world more fun makes it a happier place to live Kelly didn't have a lot of money but he did have something much more valuable to share something that will be remembered by everyone who knew him it was simply the way he lived his life wasn't about greatness it was about goodness it wasn't about how long he lived but how he approached every day like it might be his last and the only mark he worried about leaving was the kindness and humor and joy to be alive he showed everyone who ever met him <sighs> i'll miss him i'll miss him very much <laughs> but he got what he wanted <laughs> he's he's with the woman he loves waiting for the two of them to be reunited. <sighs> I guess he just wanted to end his life filled with the hope that when he woke up, everything would be perfect. And really, isn't that pretty much what everyone wants? <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. I'm so glad I got to know you in this lifetime. I liked what you said at the service. Jack, I know this wasn't part of the deal, but I have to take some time off. <clears throat> it's fine. In fact, you all should. You've earned a vacation. I, I think you should all get away. And then, you know, come back. Absolutely. Come back. I might actually take my vacation right here. I mean, I never really had the chance to get to know this place. The people here. So... Until we see each other again.
The blood is drained and replaced with a glycerol-based substitute, which won't freeze or clot. We pack each of them into a neuro container, which then goes into these polyethylene tanks. The tanks are then filled with liquid nitrogen. Maybe on the way home, we should stop by the taxidermist, watch him stuff some rabbits. <laughs> If you don't mind, we we try to keep the equipment sterilized. It's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke. <laughs> it's not to love. If I may, the liquid nitrogen begins to take effect. And over a course of two weeks, their body temperatures drop to minus 196 degrees centigrade and stay there. Kind of like a thermos, but without the little cup. It won't fit in your lunchbox. <gasps> The windows are there because we like to see faces. These people are still very much alive to us, still very much a part of the world. I'll be just a tad late on their cable bills. <laughs> you are interested in this procedure for your father, correct? Because you're, you're not taking it very seriously. I'm sorry. That's just how we cope with this sort of thing. We giggle. Right. She's right. Ever since we were kids, it didn't matter how bad it was. Uncle Frank lost his toe in that unfortunate <laughs> garden hole incident. What'd we do? We, we giggled. Uh, next door neighbor's canary got barbecued in that freakish little butane mishap. Giggle, giggle, giggle. giggle, giggle. <laughs> People who are serious about what we have to offer usually ask how we can bring someone back to life. The answer is, they're not legally dead. As long as they're frozen quickly, everything necessary for life is still intact. I have a question. When you bring them back, can we see them, or do they just wander the earth eating human flesh? Get out. Oh, is it getting cold in here? Get out! <laughs> wake up! Wake up! Ow! Oh, I know him! <laughs> <laughs> and they say they don't take American Express. It was the only way in. And exposing a deadly double agent who was trying to elude capture by faking his own death and being buried with an oxygen tank only to be dug up later? We knew all that, you know. Well, I know. I was just saying it for anyone who might have been wondering why we're going through all the trouble. Who'd be wondering? I don't know. Anyone. Look, I've never told you guys this. It's kind of embarrassing. But sometimes I get the weirdest feeling like people are watching us. Like they're listening in on every single thing we do or say. You know, I get that feeling too. So do I. Creepy, huh? Yeah, very. My hair's a mess. Making some arrangements, a few last minute details um, for a funeral. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, well, was it somebody close? Uh, <laughs> I guess you might say that. The funeral is my own. There are three career criminals with one shot at freedom. Now they're working for the feds who put them away. These are the women of She Spies. Bad girls gone good.
my Cassie, Dee Dee, my present roommates and best friends. This is Kelly, my former roommate and best friend. Kelly, I know that name. Oh. We heard all about you. Uh oh. Oh, don't worry. She stopped at the part about how you wanted to be more than just roommates, but had to move away because the sleeping together didn't work out. And when I say stopped, I mean, well, kept going. Dee has got a cold. Yeah, I know how it is. Stuffed up, runny mouth. You mean nose. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh, you guys call each other and say, are you wearing your skin-tight black leotard today? Uh, we sort of work together. Oh, where'd you guys meet? In jail. When we were, you know, visiting with our church groups so we could see how really bad all those criminals were. In case any of us, you know, ever decided to drift away from our church group and, you know, commit a crime. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you. Kelly, you gotta tell me what's going on. <laughs> um, okay. I guess you've probably heard of cryogenics. Sure we have. The human snow cone, the freeze-dried nuts, the people who get frostbite after they die. Walt Disney did it. Who's next? Michael Eisner? Uh, the only people who have done that are absolute zeros. Mm, are people with bipolar personalities. What were they in jail for? Was it beating a joke to death? I met somebody, Julie, a year ago. Um, we fell in love. But she got sick. Um, they couldn't do anything for her, and she died a couple of days ago. Oh. I'm sorry. It's OK, because she's not gone, not forever. She's been frozen. And when they find a cure for what killed her, she'll be thawed out and made good as new. She'll get to live again. Forgive me, but it's not supposed to be perfected yet. I mean, no one thinks it works. OK, that's what I thought. But well, we found a place, and they've put millions of dollars into research. They're guaranteeing that they'll be able to bring her back, which is why I've decided to be frozen with her. What? I said, which is why I've decided... Not what, what did you say? What, what are you talking about? What? You know what. You can't be serious. I, I am serious. This happens in two days. What? What, what did I say or what, what am I talking about? Kelly! What? You guys might want to pull up a chair. This has been known to go on for days. Why are you doing this? Why am I doing this? I asked you first. Because. Because. Because! Because isn't a reason you give for doing something like this. Because is a reason I give you if I was four years old and I didn't want you playing in my sandbox anymore. You don't want me playing in your sandbox anymore. Don't try to change the subject. Why are you doing this? Why do you care? Because. So now it's a reason. Because I care about you, OK? Because you're here now, alive and healthy. I don't understand why you would choose to be dead. I'm not choosing to be dead. I'm choosing to be in love. Shane, I could be old or gone by the time they find a cure. This way, when Julie's brought back, I can be there. And we can pick up right where we left off. Isn't it better to take this kind of chance, especially for love, than to just let it die? It's just the age-old story of a man and a woman trying to preserve their relationship through the miracle of refrigeration. Just ice, thanks. Well, as strange as it all sounds, I actually find it kind of romantic. But why not wait a few years, you know, live a little more first and make sure it works? <coughs> he doesn't want to take the chance that something else might kill him. A drunk driver, a random bullet, an enormous bale of hay dropping out of the loft of a barn and snapping his neck. That happens. He can't damage any major organs when he dies or they might not be able to bring him back. He's planning on injecting himself with something. He's thought of everything. He put all their things in storage, gave the cryogenics lab control of all his finances. He scooped out a ton of Purina for the cat, Tebowed the next 5,687 episodes of Yes, Dear. So what's the story with him and Shane? They were best friends who tried to... That's right, unzippity doo da. They were very close, which is why we have to be careful about what we say. No more stooping to the kind of bad jokes you might be tempted to make about two people doing something like this. You know, their relationship's on ice. That they froze their assets. And sex is out, she's frigid, and he's... Yeah, I get the picture. And we were just warming up. And you think he'd really go through with this? I don't know. He didn't seem like the kind of guy who'd get cold feet. Cool to the notion. He'd give his girlfriend the cold shoulder. Darn, I forgot how much fun it was to stoop. <laughs> and uh, you're saying he doesn't even think of it as killing himself. He's just hitting the pause button for a while, kind of freeze-framing his life. What, I don't get to try one? I mean, neither of them sounds crazy, right? I mean, we're not talking about a couple of frosted flakes here. It's not about tossing a couple of fruitcakes in the freezer. Two perfectly sane people are choosing to be mom and popsicles, <laughs> choosing to be frozen stiffs. That's probably enough. OK. <clears throat> I got it. We know when we're hoping you don't give it to us. Shane asked me to look in the cryogenics lab, which she's with Kelly, and get this. It was secretly bought a year ago by none other than Henry Harrington. Billionaire Henry Harrington? 
media empire disappeared from sight? That, why would he buy a place like that? He shut himself off from the world a year ago, almost exactly when he bought the lab. You think that's why he disappeared from sight? You think he might be there, frozen? Maybe I can find out. I ran a con on him a couple of years ago. I spent some time in his house. Slut. Slut of money you probably got. That's what I said. I didn't sleep with him, Jack. I just pretended to work for a disabled veteran's charity and robbed him of half a million bucks. Sheesh, some people always think the worst. OK, fine. So he's supposed to be holed up at home. If Cassie can find a way to get in there, maybe Dee Dee and I can go to the cryogenics lab. I just, I had plans, but well, now I don't. So I thought maybe if you'd like the company. They did an excellent job. He looks so natural. Pale always was his color. <laughs> Try to say something nice about someone. What a day, huh? Parachuting into a cemetery because the 